The challenge with microservices-based architecture is that it starts to feel like an ever-going and never-ending knot. Splitting a monolithic application into hundreds or even thousands of services starts to introduce critical issues like increased latency as these services start to be supported by different servers and the risk of one failing service taking down the entire system. And don't even get me started on the availability and consistency of data, especially as more and more of these services need to share the same data. So how do we get the benefits of this architecture without all of the pains? We can simplify microservices architecture with Redis Enterprise. In this demo, we'll cover four different solutions that can help us tackle the pains that comes from scaling out microservices. We'll cover query caching, the CQRS pattern, API gateway caching, and finish with inter-service communication. We'll go over these solutions and talk about their architecture, why and when we use them, and then finish with a demo example of each. So that is a ton of stuff to cover, and we're going to do it in less than 10 minutes. So let's dive in. So we'll start with query caching. As I said, this is a very popular way to reduce latency and increase speed and performance in microservices-based architecture. It's pretty simple, actually. We are caching a record needed for a single domain so that the data is always hot, serving the microservice much quicker than an RDBMS or disk-based NoSQL database. At the same time, increasing the number of operations per second, we use a query cache when a single domain needs increased performance of operations and reduced latency. So it's really for any microservice that has a slow database. With that, let's turn to the demo. In this demo, we are using a look aside cache, which means when reading data, the application will first check Redis for the data. If it exists, then it will use it. If not, a call will be made to the relational database and then the cache will be populated and used going forward. We have two different performance graphs here to show the power of the query cache. The top is the number of requests per second, and the bottom is the latency by milliseconds. We'll first run this demo on just the relational database to see how it handles the traffic and even the spikes of traffic, and then we'll enable the cache to see what happens. So as you can see, currently our relational database is not handling the spikes of traffic well at all. When there's a spike of traffic, our millisecond response time goes well over one second, and our requests go down to just about 5,000. So let's go ahead and enable the cache and see how things change. And we'll see the change on the very right-hand side of the graph. You can see that the cache gets loaded here, and then the response or the latency in milliseconds drops immediately, well to below 200 milliseconds, which is pretty incredible. And then what about the request per second? So we're seeing almost double in request per second, which just means more users on our application using it su successfully. So it's a really easy and simple way to show the query cache. On to the next solution, the CQRS pattern. For those who are not familiar with the CQRS pattern, CQRS means Command Query Responsibility Segregation. In this diagram, where one microservice owns a system of record, the command database, while another requires fast read access, or the queries, for a different business context. If that same database is used for both microservices, their deployment would be coupled breaking the isolation principle, and could only optimize for either writes or reads, but not both. The CQRS pattern decouples reads and writes. The command database is focused on high durability and consistency, while the query is focused on performance and serving the data. So when do we use it? When data from one domain needs to be queried in a different service without creating dependencies between services and writes must flow through the system of record. With that, let's turn to the demo. In this demo, we'll be looking at an e-commerce website that is having difficulty keeping up with its increased traffic. Like in our previous demo, we'll see how this website performs just on its SQL based database and then turn on Redis Enterprise to see how the performance changes. So we'll go ahead and take a look. Currently, our database latency is over one second. And once we turn on Redis Enterprise, we'll not only see the increase in performance and speed, but also additional features as well. So we'll go ahead and enable that. We're now well under 10 milliseconds of database latency. And those additional features are like the autocomplete. So if I just search for Adidas, there we go, boom. 
And we also have filtering options to help our customers find what they need faster as well. Next, API gateway caching, which is caching globally shared data that must be accessed by all microservices at the API gateway level. Keeping the highly requested data hot so that operations happen at sub millisecond speed. Typically, this data is session and authentication data for things like user IDs, preferences, authorization status, and permissions. So when do we use this solution? When we need globally shared data served to microservices to streamline user logins and add resilience to applications by reducing failures at the API gateway, which can act as a single point of failure. In this demo, let's use Kong as our API gateway management solution, and let's simulate the session and authentication data being used. Redis Enterprise caches authentication data in a token that can be quickly pulled to authenticate users and relay key session information, like user settings and permissions. This reduces overall application latency without breaking the bounds of each microservice business context and requiring each service to do its own authentication. Finally, let's finish with streamlining inter-service communication between microservices by using Redis Streams as a lightweight event-driven message broker. I'll start with perhaps an obvious statement. Microservices need to communicate a lot of things all of the time. State, events, and a diverse variety of data, in some cases without needing an immediate response or asynchronously. It can be super complex, time consuming to maintain and costly to implement this type of messaging. Redis Streams as the asynchronous message broker provides a publish subscribe or pub sub capability to populate the stream without having to add that logic to the microservice. So when do we use this solution? When storing transient data, such as events and messages, they simply need a fast and right read operation. Or simply because using a message broker instead of APIs for events and messages that need no response. This subscribing service can read the message when it is available, so there isn't any coupling of services, which can lead to more points of failure or delay. In this demo, I'm going to be showing you how we use Redis Streams with our inter-service communication between Redis Smart, our e-commerce website, and our backend. On the very right, you'll see a list of Redis commands, which eventually concludes with our inventory being updated live through a server-side event, essentially reducing one step in our microservices-based architecture. And it's as easy and as simple as that with adding Redis streams to handle events like this, that can happen at a very large scale. Well, that covers it. Redis Enterprise has a versatile set of solutions for reducing complexity and enabling performance and resiliency in microservices-based applications. Want to get started? Download our solution brief to go into even more detail on these solutions.